All right, so you're thinking about buying a house and you are curious about what closing costs are. Well, in today's video, I'm going to explain to you top to bottom what closing costs are and who pays for them. Yo, so what's going on, everybody? My name is Alex Bear Hayden. I'm a Southern California realtor operating out of Orange County, specifically Irvine, California. That's my bread and butter. However, I do operate throughout the Southern Coast. Uh, places like San Diego, I've got clients up there uh, that I'm currently working with. I also have clients in Ventura County. Uh, Ventura County is a hot spot for all of my uh, military brothers and sisters. If you're active duty or if you um, decided to uh, retire out there in Ventura County and you're a veteran, uh, that's where most of my, uh, my veteran people are. Um, so uh, in today's video, I'm going to basically detail, um, as I alluded to in the introduction, uh, closing costs and who pays for them. Please like, subscribe to the channel, um, hit the notification bell because your boy drops gems a couple of times a week and some weeks I'll even drop a third video just to kind of give you an idea of what it's like living in Irvine, California. Uh, without further ado, let's get to the video. All right, so two questions are posed here, right? What are closing costs and who pays for them? I guess I'll answer the latter question first. Who, play, who pays for closing costs? the buyer and the seller, right? There are responsibilities on both parties to pay the co closing costs. Now, closing costs can always be negotiated between the buyer and seller. So if, uh, if the, the buyer is coming into the situation, like in 2023, what we're seeing, buyers typically right now have the advantage. So this is a great scenario for buyers to say, hey, I'm looking to um, acquire your property, but I'll do so under the conditions that you cover uh, 100 percent of my closing costs or uh, you know a certain percentage uh, closing costs are typically two percent of your mortgage or the purchase uh, the purchase price but again it's not uncommon for sellers to contribute seller concessions uh, to cover buyers closing costs now what do closing costs consist of um, I have three items that I'm going to let you know uh, that contribute to your closing costs the first item on the list are going to be your loan origination fees the second item on the list are going to be your third party reps, right? Third party reps are, you know, your, your title reps, people running your credit reports, um, people who are making sure the deed is who it is supposed to be for. Uh, and so all of these people have a thousand things that they have to do. And so you paying, uh, well, both parties, the buyer and seller paying these third party fees uh, are incorporated into that. Now, another thing that kind of wiggles its way in there is uh, you, you have your inspection, uh, your inspection cost, your inspection fee, uh, your appraisal fee. Now, of course, uh, these things are coming out of your pocket. Now, again, we get back to the uh, the beginning of the video where there is absolutely a way for you as the buyer, uh, especially in today's market, where you can have certain fees covered. Um, if you're a VA loan uh, user, um, one of the things that is uh, beneficial for you is your closing costs. Some of your closing costs can be rolled into your loan. Uh, for example, when I bought my house back in 2020, when I bought my house, um, all of my loan origination fees, uh, I had that rolled smooth into the loan. Um, so whatever I bought my house at for, I just tacked on a few thousand dollars on top of that to help cover um, the loan origination fees because that's less money out of my pocket, um, less money out of the seller's pockets because they contributed money towards my closing costs. Um, and it also allows the bank or the lender, you know, to get their money, even if it's on the back end. The third item on the list has to go to the prepaid expenses. Now, the, your prepaid expenses are things like your, your property taxes, right? Um, there's basically an escrow account that is established once you uh, purchase your house. And in this um, account, one of the things that go, that goes into it are your prepaid taxes. And it's set up that way so that you don't have to worry about scrambling, trying to get the property taxes of your house. And it's not even necessarily predicated on who owns the house, but the house itself has property taxes. And so the, a, 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 a reason why uh, there is this prepaid property tax into an escrow account is to make sure that your home doesn't fall into uh, some situation where property taxes were not paid. Uh, a great thing about your escrow account when you're paying your mortgage is your property taxes are a part of your mortgage itself. And so whoever's running your escrow account, they are responsible for dispersing the money for your property taxes that you're paying every single month into your mortgage. And then miscellaneous items in there are gonna be like property taxes, 
um, your home warranty and your title, like your home insurance, all of those things go into your uh, home loan. So your prepaid expenses round up the third item on the list. There you go. There goes your closing costs. In a nutshell, I try to make this video as quickly as possible. It doesn't really require a 10 minute video for me to be speaking. Um, but yes, like the video, comment, uh, share the video if you find that this value, this is valuable to anybody, uh, especially somebody who's actually about to go through the home buying process so I can help as many people as I possibly can. All right. I'm gonna catch y'all on the next one. Peace.